Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today I thought I'd just build on a talking point that came up during a recent call with Starstreams. And that's how could CIG incentivize people better to get more involved in the PTU. Helping to keep up numbers during the all important testing phase to smooth the rollout of new patches. I'd like to be clear from the outset that despite what's going on this won't be a vid roasting CIG for the rollout. This isn't my first rodeo when it comes to MMO launches and patch rollouts. And rather I want to talk about how we could maybe improve the amount of data the devs are getting ahead of major releases. So if that sounds good to you then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro and then let's get into it. So I guess before we dive into the ideas on how to incentivize PTU and issue council participation, we should stop a bit to talk about the why. I think most people will get it in the context of the last few days. And just picking out a few messages from CIG, I think it's fairly safe from even my smooth brain perspective that there simply weren't enough of us playing the PTU in the build-up to 3.18. There was an element of desperation in these messages from the devs, and I think they really wanted more of us to get involved and give the patch a fair shake before it went to live. The way I'm looking at the events of the last few days is that we're currently in the midst of the stress tests that should have been, and only with enough people testing are CRG able to gather the data they need to identify the bugs. I know that I will bump into a few comments telling me that incentives shouldn't be required and that people should just be happy to play test for the sake of improving the game and contributing to the project, and while I think the view of this group is very noble, I would respectfully ask them to consider that they are a minority. The majority of players just want to play the game, and aren't so interested in the minutiae of game development. Some people who love cars want to understand how every part fits together, but more people can enjoy the thrill of putting the pedal to the metal and just going fast. And I do think this percentage of people is only going to shrink as the game hits more of a mass market and gets more appeal and traction. In my view we need to come up with some form of incentive plan to get the average player to disrupt their gameplay with the unpaid labour that is active testing. Playing in PTUs where they'll experience no real progression, stopping before clicking relaunch to send crash reports, and taking time out of their R&R time to file paperwork on the issue council. To be clear, there are some incentives. The Uvacati testing group is arguably one of the main ones here, with especially active players who contribute via the reporting framework being given insider knowledge and access to new builds ahead of the main group. And this will undoubtedly appeal to some of you, but to be honest it also comes with some downsides. I'm not an avocado, but based on discussions I've had with people who are, some of the Uvacati testing sessions make the 318 launch look breezy. This might be fun if your other hobbies include extreme marathons because regular marathons aren't quite painful enough for you, but for most of us, it will be a hard pass. I have also seen a couple of moments on Spectrum where CIG have given away prizes to individuals who've contributed a lot to the issue council. But the downside to this is that it, it doesn't really incentivize mass participation, because you'll know if you work a normal job, sort of a 9 to 5, that you'll never compete with some of the people who have a lot more time to play, and therefore are more involved in the bug reporting process. So if it always comes down to who does the most reporting, then a very narrow selection of people are going to win, and other people are going to be disincentivized because they'll know they'll never achieve that. So what could more suitable incentives look like? Well, first up I think it would be cool if a certain degree of participation in the testing, which most people could achieve, could lead to some unique in-game rewards. Things like one-of-a-kind skins. A lot of us MMO players are collectors. We care about unique cosmetics because they're some of the best show-off items out there in a multiplayer game. Particularly if something was limited edition. My daily driver, for instance, is my Drake Cutlass Black, and one of the most common questions I get asked in the comments section when this ship features in vids is, where did you get that cutty paint? It was a best in show one from the 2949 IAE sales, and unfortunately, unless you're willing to shell out far more than it's worth on the grey market, you just can't get it anymore. 
Obviously, some people will argue that this sort of exclusivity is bad. Why should I have something that they can't get? But it creates an element of FOMO that CIG have no problem using to sell ships, and they could harness this same FOMO to encourage testing. So for instance, you as a new player in years to come might be a bit gutted not to be able to get your hands on the 3.21 PTU tester Scorpius skin you see me with. But it's going to incentivize you to go and test the next PTU build that you can be part of when it comes up. I know some people think I'm way too calm to be a mobber player, but for my sins I do enjoy a bit of League of Legends. And League does have some read across here, with their ranked rewards. At the end of each major patch you actually see a pickup in players as people are grinding games in an attempt to bump themselves up to the next level and get the rewards, which tend to include unique skins. Another idea CIG could look at is mimicking something like the highly successful referral program they have. The referral ladder has a heap of bonuses you get by hitting various levels, and since most of these are digital assets, CIG can dish them out at no marginal cost. It wouldn't hurt to have a similar ladder for bug reporting and verification. This could actually create some equality between selling the game and testing the game. Not everybody has the possibility to rank up thousands of referrals, but nearly everybody has the opportunity to get involved with bug smashing, reporting, and getting into the PTUs. Being able to see some progression and earn long-term rewards that will stay in your hangar would almost certainly encourage more of us to grind this. Obviously, I don't want to misrepresent myself here. I'm just a guy who makes some videos and I don't have answers to some of the trickier questions. People with much more knowledge of this sort of thing would have to work out how to gamify the system, but not allow people to simply min-max getting the rewards if that leads to poor feedback. But with the game only growing, I think it's fair to say that improving player participation in testing is essential. I don't personally hold anything against CIG employees for the mildly disastrous rollout, I think they simply lacked enough data to work with. They could have, with that, fixed some of the problems we've encountered ahead of this PU launch. And I would ask anybody who's getting a bit angry, maybe typing some fiery posts on Spectrum, to just think, you know, these people, they're people who go to work, they hit an office every day. And a lot of us have been in that position where we've gone to the office and it's a complete shitstorm. I obviously also don't hold anything against players who haven't got involved in the PTU. There's no contractual obligation on you to be an unpaid playtester and bug reporter. And there's no real incentive outside of a tenuous moral obligation to the project to get you to essentially intern for free at CIG. I think the pressure's really on CIG's management to look at how they can improve this going forward. Hopefully this week's real stress test will lead to the proper rollout of 318 shortly, and we'll all be playing and instantly forgetting about all the 19Ks, 30Ks and 60Ks. But let me know what you think down in the comments, and feel free to donate me a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the vid. With all that said, thanks very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.